everyone. I'm from the San Jose community, mashallah, and today um, I would like to talk about our children, how important it is to obey our parents, uh, the parents' responsibility, uh, touch a little bit on uh, puberty, uh, God willing virginity, and drugs and alcohol. So, <laughs> I was, uh, I said it's best to just go with it, okay. So, first I want to talk to the children uh, of all ages, God willing, and tell them how important it is to obey your parents, uh, especially when your parents are submitters, because they will only exhort you to do the right thing in life and follow God's laws. God gave you these parents to be thankful of, to be appreciative of, and they will send you, by God's grace, down the right path. So it is such a blessing for you guys to have submitting parents and that we must follow God's laws and one of them is to honor your parents. So in, sorry, bear with me. So in verse 17, verse 23, your Lord has decreed that you should not worship except him and your parents shall be honored as long as one of them Sorry, as long as one or both of them live, you shall never say to them, Oof, the slightest gesture of annoyance, nor shall you shout at them, you shall treat them amicably. What is the slightest gesture of annoyance? Not to say oof to them. If your parents ask you to do something or give you advice in some way, you might not understand it at this time in your life, but believe me, there is a very good reason for it. You can talk to your parents and communicate with them, but you shouldn't answer them back, you shouldn't shout at them, and you shouldn't give them any slightest gesture of annoyance. So, no oof, uh, uh, that's gesture of annoyance. So now I want to speak to the parents, God willing, about what God tells us in educating our children. And this is a huge responsibility for us, bearing our kids in submission. As they grow, we are not just their parents, we are also their teachers by God's grace. They are around us the most. We should be the most educated by God's uh, grace in submission, and God teaches us this through the teachings of the messenger. We learn that we must teach our children the right way and enjoin them to observe the contact prayers and to follow God's laws. God will take care of our kids, but we must make sure that we are with God too. So, we have to enjoin our children to do the contact prayers. I don't want to get sidetracked. And that means, are we enjoining them to do all the contact prayers? Are we studying with them? Are we enjoining them to do the Friday prayer? That is including the contact prayers. This is really important for their soul. Instill good habits when they are young. As a child comes out of their mom's belly, they know nothing. And God says this in the Quran. They know nothing and they learn by what they see and the examples that they see around them. Let the example I set for the future generations be a good one. So we want to instill good habits when they are young. We want to educate them this way. So it might not be, of course, at two, three years of age. This is young. But as they grow and they start to see, you probably notice your little ones will be doing the prayer with you. They might not understand it, but they see their mommy and daddy do it, and they want to do it with you. And one day, your kid will turn around to you, maybe at four, it could be five, it could be six, maybe seven. And they'll start asking you a lot of questions. Start getting them up for their contact prayers at dawn. I take my kids out of... Uh, I did when they were young, when they were five, seven, and nine, mashallah by God's grace, to do their Friday prayer, take them out of school. Um, I got them up. At the, at the beginning, it's hard, guys. But the, we steadfastly persevere in doing it. God will make it easy for you. Okay. So it's really important we enjoin them to do our contact prayers. Our kids follow by what they see. 
and they mimic the parents. And we must set the best examples, but we're on the path in submission ourselves, just like our children. We have a lot of great kids in submission. And um, I know that when I study with my own kids, I, I tell them, you know, I'm on this path like you too. And remind me if you see something. So I'm, we might fail sometimes, and that's okay. But we show them by repenting and not doing it again. Let your kids know that you, know, you are wrong too sometimes when you are wrong. And that you have no ego in saying that to your children because they'll follow that example. As parents, if we take the dominant position and we teach our kids, I'm a parent, I'm always right. We're teaching them arrogance. So we have to be humble in this life and also know that they are looking at us. They are following our example. So we know God takes care of our kids. And mashallah, this is such a blessing. When we're with God, our kids are with God. But part of us of being with God is educating our children. Part of us being with God is getting them up for the prayers, is enjoining them to do the contact prayers, is having studies with them. Um, always talk to them. Communication is really important. So I'm going to go to teenage years. <laughs> Inshallah. So I just want to read verse 22, 132 before I go to that. You shall enjoin your family to observe the contact prayer salat and steadfastly persevere in doing so. We do not ask you for any provisions. We are the ones who provide for you. The ultimate triumph belongs to the righteous. We also have 62.9 where God says, drop all business and attend your Friday prayers. It says, oh, you who believe. It does not say, oh, men or women or children. It says, oh, you who believe. For the older kids, I want parents to, mashallah, we have a lot of parents who are not shy. But I know there, that sometimes it can become a very shy subject to talk about these things with them, like virginity keeping your chastity, puberty. Um, let your kids know what to be, what's out there. I'll give you an example. If you, if you don't talk to your kids about these things and they become in a situation where they're with friends and these subjects arise, they're awkward. It's awkward for them. So I want to turn to Appendix 34. Sons and daughters of the true believers must be taught that happiness throughout their lives depends on following God's laws and preserving their chastity. This means that they must keep themselves for their spouses and never allow anyone else to touch them in a sexual manner. Talk to her kids. So I, for myself, I spoke to my children, the boys, at about, I did it at 11, 12 because it's like being a girl in puberty. When you talk to them and they're already going through it, they're like, go away, mom, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about this. But when you look at that stage before they transition, your kids are hugging you, they're loving you, they want to be you know, with you. When you are open with them in communication from a young age, that transition will be a smooth one by God's grace because now you've done your part. God is going to help you and they will still talk about it even when they are going through it and into their older teens. Because they have hormonal physical changes, going to school, social peer pressures, increased self-awareness and awareness of like certain things that are happening that they might not understand, and all the changes in the brain. God tells us that there are temptations. Today, society is replete with powerful temptations. This is in Appendix 24. In American society of the 80s, even parents are talking about boyfriends for their daughters and girlfriends from their sons. They're supplying birth control to the children. They're teaching them about safe sex. That this is, you know, if you must do it, you've got the condoms, you've got the pill, you know. Their mothers will take their daughters to the doctor. 
We have to teach our children that our children are different from other kids. Our children are, have a different responsibility. And God takes care of them. An alarming percentage of teenagers are sexually active. They're not psychologically, mentally, or physically ready for this. I know the recommendation from the messenger is 10 years after puberty. We know as ourselves, we know our children that they need to nurture, they need to grow, they need to, to you know, like, what you want at 15 and what you want at 19 are two different things and what you want at 22, 23 is, is very different things. Unfortunately for some, people realize this too late, but it is never too late to start talking to your children. Then you have moral breakdowns. So, God says persistently and repeatedly talk to this. If I were to think of persistently and repeatedly, I would say this is a lot, right? So we should talk um, a lot about this um, to our children. So talk to them early, okay? This is our responsibility, and we must persevere in doing so. This is what God tells us. God knows what's best for us, okay? And he knows that Satan wants to come at us from every angle. And he wants to come at our kids and he wants to come at us. If we do our part in submission and let our children know what's out there in the world and what their responsibility is to it and communicate with them and talk over chronically, have studies with them, okay, they will be prepared to deal with the situations and God will help them. Because we come out of our mother's bellies knowing nothing, as we grow in submission, if we instill the good habits from a young age, our children will be, mashallah, growing and God will take care of them. Okay. That's it. Awesome, awesome. That was so good. My mother told me to come sit next to her. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Assalamu alaikum. My question is based on what you said about um, not saying huff to your parents and how God gives us commandments that we are to uphold. And I actually lived that experience. You know, I was young and I actually wanted to be accepted. And not in the eyes of my parents, but the eyes of the people in the environment that I was around. And God gives us a law that if we pay attention to, will prevent us from going into that direction. You know, when he says, I will adorn your work so that what you're doing, you may think is right. While the whole time, you're going in the wrong direction. And as a young kid, my mom used to always share with me about receiving the consequences from God based upon what you do. And like you said, if you install that knowledge as a child, and no matter what the kid may go through, he always hears that God-given voice in his head, you know, and, 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 and it actually keeps you on track. No matter if you stray off or not, you still got God right there whispering, don't do that, don't go too far. And you know, and for me, um, to know that my mind don't belong to me, I can't control the thoughts that come in my head. We have no other choice but to be submitters because the thoughts that come in my head, I ask myself, why did I do that? Why did I say that? And you know, so we are actually living the prophecies of our own lives. So at the end of the day, sister, to hear you talk about, you know, God and following that path of listening and paying attention and, and not saying huff to our parents. I mean, for me, that was a lifesaver from my mother who, who gave me that as a child, you don't supposed to say huff to your parents. And I mean, for me to see that example, how the younger guys follow me now, where I don't even yell at my mother. I don't even, even bother to say one bad word or try to show any annoyance. And, and the power in that, and to see my nieces and nephews following that path is just beautiful and it works. So I'm telling everybody, young, old, apply what God give you and you'll see magic happen right before your eyes. But that's just my comment. Awesome, awesome. Sonos? 
Assalamu alaikum, Mary. So in your speech, you said that we have to talk to our children repeatedly and persistently. Can you just give examples? Like, do you study the Quran with them like every day? Do you remind them of Appendix 34? How does it work? So uh, I study with my children, uh, mashallah. Some days uh, um, I always try, even if it's only a 20-minute discussion, even if you don't get a study in every day, I try to get four studies a week, uh, God willing. But um, if I don't, I'll always do, I'm always talking to them, um, mashallah, by God's grace. So I talk, I open the appendices. I talk about Appendix 34 a lot with them. And as they're going through different stages in their life, um, yeah, I, I talk to them, you know, about like the things that they would see in middle school, that they would see in high school. And I would tell them, tell them what God tells us in the Quran and I would show them uh, through verses and, you know, and have open communication. Just don't be shy to talk to the kids about this because it is a commandment for us to follow.